are in listen-only mode. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Tech Geek webinar series. Uh, first of all, would like to apologize for starting off with the session a little late today. Uh, we were having some uh, technical issues uh, at our end. Uh, the topic for today's session is what you need to know about PRPC7 and how it can change your career graph. And uh, we have with us today uh, Mr. Sakti Prasanna Bhattacharya. He is the Vice President at Vertisa. Uh, he also goes by SP. Uh, he has more than 22 years of service delivery experience in IT industry. He is currently leading the global delivery organization of business process management practice in Vertisa, managing a team of 1,000 professionals who work on different BPM technologies like Pega, PRPC, IBM BPM, and Oracle BPM, etc. He has significant experience in managing very large BPM initiatives spanning across multiple geographies. He has significant experience in directing and managing various types of BPM engagements, application maintenance, large application development, and re-engineering of distributed systems. He has extensively worked with Fortune 500 clients in banking and financial services industry, insurance and healthcare industry in the US and in Europe. So I'm now going to hand over the session over to SP. Over to you. SP, I have uh, made you the presenter. You may start your presentation. Uh, SP, you are not audible at this present moment. I hope uh, you can hear me. I think uh, our speakers are experiencing some problem with the audio connection. Just request you all to be uh, patient. Uh, we are just trying to fix it.
Mr. Bhattacharya, you are still not audible. Can you hear me, Suratna? Yes, I can hear you now. Okay, what was, I, I don't know what was the issue. Not so a Sorry problem. for that. Uh, okay. Uh, so, let me, let me start uh, the things, uh, you know. Sorry guys, uh, we had some technical problem. Uh, so, uh, you know, Suratna has already given you my introduction. So, just a quick uh, background of my association with uh, Pega Systems. So I started with uh, Pega Walks since 1999 and then I worked with uh, Pega Walks until 2003 and then when PRPC came into the uh, picture around 2004 so I started working on PRPC. So you know I have seen the uh, evolution of this product. Uh, from a simple rule and workflow engine uh, to a full-fledged BPM switch. And also while working with this product, I have seen the evolution of the delivery management in this niche area. So today, uh, I along with my team would like to give you uh, some insights of uh, what would be the future uh, project uh, model, delivery model on PRPC 7 and how uh, as a VPM practitioner we need to uh, you know, enable ourselves in our um, learning uh, to work in that kind of challenging environment and also to stay ahead uh, on our career curve. So guys, uh, with me today, um, Rajini, he, Rajini is uh, right now leading the PPM delivery in our Chennai center in Vartusa and he is also uh, one of the chief architects uh, in PPM portfolio and also with me, Shivram. Shivram is our, uh, you know, knowledge, knowledge champion and he leads the uh, global training and skill enablement in Vartosa. So with this, uh, let me move to the agenda slide. So today we have, uh, you know, can you see the agenda slide? Yeah. So today in our agenda, we have uh, items like, you know, what would be the future engagement model in BPM space when the chosen technology is PRPC 7 and then we will walk you through you know some of the competency requirement to work in that kind of project environment and after that Shivram will walk you through some of the uh, inside information on PRPC 7 which are not so obvious and also which are pretty much you know from the perspective of a developer and then uh, lastly we would like to you know give you highlights on a very unique initiative right now that Vatusa has undertaken uh, along with Pegasystems on upgrading existing PRPC applications to PRPC 7. So Vartusa has uh, built tools, accelerators, frameworks in, in doing that kind of update and Rajini will walk you through with this. So let me move to the slides uh, that is going to talk about the uh, future engagement model in a BPM space when the chosen technology is uh, PRPC 7. So, uh, you know, Rain Halterman, uh, he is the uh, leader now in BPM leaders community 
and he is uh, kind of you know uh, treated as a thought leader in this space. So Wayne Holterman actually proposed uh, the model that is currently you know I'm showing to you. So the left hand triangle uh, is we call it the pull and push triangle. So quality is is the parameter which is under constant pool by three items called time, scope, and cost in future BPM engagement. I'm sure most of you know that you know in a BPM engagement when we are doing it in agile development methodology, the item that is being compromised uh, at the very early stage is the quality. Just to keep time, scope, and cost under control. Now, this uh, this uh, you know challenge is a kind of mitigated in a PRPC seven in a very unique way. And first, uh, you know, to to give you an idea on that, let me first uh, you know, tell you that quality by definition is a subjective term. So we need to put some kind of objectivity on this and Reint again uh, proposed a model where he identified five parameters which are uh, shown in a uh, rectangle beside that triangle that F-U-R-P-S. Now what does this F-U-R-P-S mean? Uh, F stands for functional quality. So somebody might say that if the application doesn't meet the entire functional requirement then the quality is poor. U stands for user experience. So somebody might say that you know if the user experience is not consistent then the application is of poor quality. So similarly uh, this FURPS means functional quality, user experience, reliability of an application, meeting the performance SLA and supportability. These five parameters define the quality as an objective item. So combining this triangle and the rectangle we get the final triangle where uh, the functional quality being taken out because it is kind of intuitive in nature. We all know that unless the application meets the functional requirement, uh, we will not be able to go further uh, for the other parameters to judge and gauge the quality. So how PRPC7 is taking care of this parameters? So for example, the stage based case management in PRPC 7. It's an item which ensures a functional quality is maintained. The requirements, client requirements are delivered the way a client is expecting it. The UI responsiveness, the UI responsiveness in PRPC 7 maintains that whatever be the rendering platform, the application will behave in a similar fashion, seamlessly, without any kind of you know, developer intervention. Similarly, application modeling, the data modeling, process modeling makes the application reliable and you know, it can meet any kind of throughput without impacting the performance SLA. Similarly, you know supportability like where the application is for multi node or a single node or it's high availability or it's for limited availability all these features are you know earlier were a kind of headache to a developer because they have to uh, they have to think through these features while developing the applications however in prpc7 most of these features to a great extent being taken into the platform itself. So developers are kind of you know free to choose the way they would like to 
code their application without impacting the quality. So that's what uh, you know. Rent has suggested, uh, and we see that you know this model fits perfectly well with the TRPC7 architecture. So now I move to the next slide, which talks about you know a BPM practitioner in that kind of challenging project delivery model. What are the skills and competencies that he need to, needs to have so that you know he can be delivering the application in the right manner, meeting the scope, timeline, and cost? So you see that if you look at uh, uh, agile project team, in most of the cases we see there are two groups interacting with each other. The first group called the define, defining group who is responsible for defining the requirements and the second group is scrum group who is responsible for building the application based on this requirement. Now the beautiful uh, you know aspects of PRPC 7 is that both this group would be working on this platform PRPC 7 and the defining group would be working on this platform to define the requirement using the new DCO features available on PRPC 7 as well as you know they would be able to manage the changes using the same DCO feature and they would be also able to schedule the task with that DCO stuff. And the Scrum group is anyway, you know, will be building this application. So, if the chosen platform is PRPC7 for a particular BPM projects, then in my opinion, based on my experience, the competencies that are needed in the team are process competency for the defining group. They need to understand how to do the process modeling using the DCO, how to you know, measure the uh, effectiveness of change management, how to measure the you know, uh, alignment of the functional requirement with the technical design, and then a developer who is part of the Scrum team would be working on architecture modeling, data modeling, process modeling, so he would be mostly working on the tools and uh, you know assets available on PRPC 7 and a project manager who is managing the entire project with the challenge that you know meeting the quality uh, at the same time keeping time scope and cost under control would be also doing the same stuff using the PRPC 7 so the layered competencies that are needed to be a successful BPM practitioner as well as you know to deliver a project successfully in PRPC 7 needs process competency, tools and assets, uh, assets competencies as well as execution rigor in the project and all these things are right now being offered to an extent uh, by the platform itself. So with this, now I am moving into the insights of PRPC 7 and my colleague Shibram will walk you through some of the not so obvious features of PRPC 7 which are part of, uh, you know, uh, uh, part of uh, uh, the functionalities uh, as well as uh, part of maintaining the performance, reliability, and supportability of uh, making a quality as an objective parameter. Shivram, over to you. Thanks, uh, thanks, Asmi. Uh, so I'm Shivram Bhupati. I take care of uh, Pega Animal Program at Rochester. So here uh, today we are going to talk about uh, what is new in PRPC. So as per this agenda, today we are going to discuss on direct capture of objectives, case management, data modeling user interface response units, multi-tenancy, 
and high availability. Yeah, we start with the uh, DCO, direct capture of objective. As everybody knows that 7 is the most awaited uh, version of Pega and it has changed a lot how to handle an application, how to create an application, how we maintain all the application throughout its life cycle. Now we start with the DCO as everybody knows that uh, when we are uh, creating an application in Pega 6.x, we have used application profiler and application accelerator, but, but now this application profiler and accelerator is decommissioned. Now we have only application express which is an enhanced tool for creation of a full fledged an application. Then coming to the sizing part, earlier we used to have only one single sizing sheet, now in Pega 7 we can generate an estimation of sizing sheet on Pega BPM, Pega Scrum and other methodologies. Now when talking about the specifications and requirements, we understood that in Pega 6.x we used to provide all the specifications requirement only in the profiler, application profiler, then we used to move to application accelerator, but now we can provide our specification requirements at any point and at any time. Now DCO is very enhanced so it can easily uh, may be easily integrated with the PMF and TMF uh, frameworks of Pega and it can be easily integrated with all other frameworks and even your user stories, user use cases can be easily maintained through DCO in Pega 7 now. I will show you the demonstration of Pega 7 now. So this is entry screen of Pega 7. So this is entry screen of Pega 7. So I log is the administrator. Now I log in as administrator at pega.com as a super user. I log in. So this is a new designer studio you are seeing. So this is a Pegasus new designer studio and this new designer studio is cross browser compatible now. It works in all browsers, Chrome, Mozilla, Firefox, all browsers it supports now. So we are seeing this designer studio where on the left hand side you see in the navigation panel that we have two more explorers are added, data explorer and the case explorer. and at the bottom you see that the uh, developer toolbar, the tracer, clipboard and UI inspector are in the bottom now. Now we start, I will show. I'll start my demonstration with showing you how to create an application in Pega 7. Now we start creating a Pega 7 application using So by clicking on new application, so by clicking on new application, so we'll get this screen here. Then I click on new application here. So I'm creating new application here. Click on create new application button. Now, so it is very simple. See now, it's just a four-step process to create a new application. So we are trying to create an sample application now. Let us say we create an onboarding application. So we are creating an onboarding application. So we are selecting build on application then coming to selection of application structure. So we are selecting whether you want the frame, framework and the implementation then providing the organization name let us say I am providing my organization name. So this is my organization. And below you see that configure advanced settings. So we click here on the configure advanced settings to configure our division layer and uh, unit layers. So we configure here our division layer and the unit layer. Then provide the details. Then click on save. Once the information is provided. 
So once the information is provided, we can move to the next level. So here in the second step, we provide the business objectives. So you can add the business objectives. Then I'm moving to the third step, where we can add the case types. So adding the case types, this is a new addition in Vega 7, where you can add the as number of case types as at the time of application generation itself. So let us say I'm talking about the onboarding application. So let us say I have one case, HR case. I have another case, finance case. So let us say I have two cases. So I have two cases here. Yeah, after providing the case details, I'm moving on to the next step. That's providing the data objects. Again, on the fourth step, you see that uh, your data objects. You can add the data objects. Oh, sorry for the interruption. I think uh, the screen is not refreshing at attendees end. Sorry, we, we are experiencing some technical issues here in sharing the screens. Uh, do you want me to uh, reshare this uh, rights with you again? Yes. Yep. Okay, uh, I believe you have received the prompt by now, SP? Yep. Okay. So is the new application onboarding screen is visible? I still cannot uh, view your screen. Okay. All right. Uh, let's see. All right. Uh, so we'll we'll move to the. Uh, okay. Even uh, the presentation screen is also not visible. I cannot view your screen so. at all. 
me up. I, I don't know. Let me let me uh, let me work this out. So. Mm, Rajini, can you see the screen? No. Okay. All right. Just hold on for a sec. Sure. Yeah. Screen sharing. No. Uh, you might want to press the play button which you can see up on top. You might actually have paused. Yeah, uh, actually in fact we have been, no we have not. Uh, in fact I have been trying to use this button but still not getting this. Okay. Um, okay how about I try and uh, share my screen? Just let me know if you can view my screen. Just one second. Sure. Uh, can you view yeah, my screen? I can see your screen. Yep, I can see your screen. Okay, let me make you the presenter back again. Let's see if this works this okay. time. Can you see my screen? Uh, not yet. What do you see uh, if you click on audience view, the tab on your go to meeting mm -hmm. control panel? What do you see there? Do you see a smaller version of your screen? Uh, no, actually what I see right now is the uh, webinar front uh, page with okay. my picture. Right, that's that's exactly what I can view as well. Yeah. Uh, right. And and you're sure uh, that you have not clicked the pause button, which is up on top? No, we haven't. Okay. Um, let me see. I don't. I don't see any problem uh, here at this point. Um, yeah, and I I can't uh, view your screen even now. Okay. okay. Would you would you uh, want to would you want to log off and maybe log back in? Yeah. We'll just do that. All right. In the meanwhile, I would request all the attendees uh, to to stay to stick around while our speakers uh, log off and re-log back in. They are facing some technical issues today.
Rajni, uh, can I quickly give you the presenters right? Uh, will you be able to share your screen perhaps? Uh, but I don't have that application that that's, we are sharing. Uh, that's fine. I You can just uh, open up your desktop. I can at least, uh, I'll, be, I'll be in a position to figure out if it's a problem with a particular machine or sure. uh, with GoToMeeting. I'm just making you the presenter. Yeah. Have you received that prompt on your screen? Yeah, I did. Okay. Um, started sharing it. Could you able to see that? Uh, not yet. Yeah, I can see it now. I can see okay. your uh, desktop now. So I think it has to do with uh, SP's uh, application or something malfunctioned. Yeah, I can okay. see the first slide wanna, as well. Yeah, I'm traversing too be able to see the changes. Right. Yeah, let me quickly uh, make him the panelist. I can see him online. Okay. Um, welcome back. So, uh, I can see the thing. Right. Uh, so should I go ahead and make you the presenter now? Yep. Okay. You have received the prompt on your screen, right? Yep. Okay. Can you see the screen now? Uh, no SP, unfortunately I can't. Oh, that's, uh, the problem is whenever we invoke the demo, huh. uh, actually somehow we are uh, stopping the screen sharing. Okay, so maybe uh, your uh, system uh, is hanging every time you are trying to uh, show the demo. Uh, the, uh, yeah, could be because then in that case what we will have to do is we, we might, you know, uh, quickly uh, walk over through the slides only and uh, we will not go to the demo again because that's what is causing the problem. Okay, so uh, in that case do you want to uh, shut down your demo application? Yeah, we'll do that. We'll shut down the demo application. Okay. Okay, yeah. So now can you see the screen? And not as yet. I'm going to let you know the moment I can. I still can't view your screen. Can you do one thing? Yeah, tell yeah. me. I can present it. Uh, if it is just a slide, I can yeah. present it as I think you can. Sure. Uh, let me yeah. give you the presenter. So right then. Yeah. yeah. Yes, I can view the slides now. Perfect. Okay. So, uh, then in that case, Rajvi, we will use your uh, slides and Shivram. Uh, we'll walk you through the, uh, the contents of this slide. Yeah. Yeah. And we will not invoke uh, any other demos at this moment because I yeah. believe the demos are causing the problem. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, sorry for that. Like we are not able to demonstrate the application. So yeah, we understood that in Pega Seven we had to support the DCO, the new features and DCO. Now we are discussing on. Another enhancing feature of Pega 7 that is stage based case management. So, this is a stage based case management view uh, slide you are seeing on the screen. So, but audible? Here in the stage based case management is a new addition in case design. Yeah. Shivram, I'm sorry. Uh, Are you audible? He needs to speak a little bit louder. I, I can't yeah. uh, make out what he's uh, saying. 
If you could come yes, little hello? close to the mic, yeah, that's fine. Yes, yeah. that's fine. Okay. So now we are talking about the another addition of Pega 7 that is uh, stage based case management. So here in the stage based case management, we divide our whole application into the small stages. A stage is a milestone way. We divide our whole application into the stages so that we can give a holistic view to the business of the process. And this every stage again can be divided into the steps of performing the application, performing the process. And that again every stage is configurable, every step is configurable, and on every every step we can configure a single step assignment or a multi step assignment or a uh, creation of a case or sub cases and the multi cases so this is an uh, this is purely meant for a giving a holistic view of a complete application process of an business and where the business and the developer work in collaboration to create the stage based case management to fill the gap between the business and the architect then we move to the next slide we move to the next slide. One second. So this is uh, no, this is about uh, benefits of the stage based case management to give an uh, holistic view of a complete the task, the processes and the policies which makes up the cases and it's, it is easy for us in the stage based case management to establish the precedence and the dependency relation between the cases. So that is about the case management. So I am running a little bit faster so that we are skipping the demo and moving to the next slide that is on data modeling. Again data modeling is greatest enhancement in PEGA 7 where you complete the data with the fuels your complete PEGA application here the in PEGA 7 we complete the how we load the data exchange, how we refer the data exchange, the entire development experience of a PEGA application is more efficient now, less error prone. Now data changes as data changes is introduced here in Pega 7 for the replacement of declare page, which is an enhancement to a declare page. Now your data page or a declare page, the older declare page can have a multiple source of data which are conditional. Again the source data can be again the source data can be tra uh, transform data transform to suit your Pega applications needs. And this data can be copied into your application and our data can be referred from your application. Data can be stored with the case or data can be referred simply from the case as a simple point. So we move to the next slide. Yeah. So as we discussed, so now your data is can be embedded as a case reference data or just it can be a copy or just it can be a copy from a case. Now again one more addition to the database that now your databases can be parameterized. So you can supply the parameters to the databases to pull the required data from the database not hold the data. Again the pull data again can be searched if the pull data is more and the pull data which what is there on the database is more then you can have a key page access to the database. I can also have reference to the list populated data or you can directly access the items of a list. So again we are skipping here the demonstration of data modeling with some technical issues. I am moving to the next part. Next slide. So yes, so user interface responsiveness. Again you know that uh, in Pega 7 UI responsiveness is added here. So in this UI responsiveness, so you are, uh, Pega is using HTML5 and CSS3 and it is a standard mode as per WC3. So your design is because now cross browser compatible because of this user uh, because of this HTML5 and CSS3 standard modes. Now Pega has introduced a skin group which is a replacement for your branding wizard. Now we have mixins, formats, again the new kind of uh, UI controls here. So dynamic con containers, layouts, auto generated controls which helps us to have a responsive UI in Pega 7. Again HTML5 application landing readiness landing page is introduced to understand when you upgrade your Pega 6.x application to Pega 7 whether the application is ready for the conversion is not and what all the needs to be taken care. So this HTML5 application readiness landing page will help you to understand what are the differences and what are the rules to be upgraded so that your application becomes the Pega 7 application. So we move to the next slide. So in the next slide we talk about multi-tenancy. Multi-tenancy is uh, one more addition in Pega 7. 
So now your Pegasus comes in the installation of normal installation and multi-tenancy installation. What is multi-tenancy is so we just we install a single machine and it is logically partitioned into the multiple, and every multiple partition machine will work as a standalone, and it helps the full support machine to have an independent environment without cost of separate installation. So in multi-tenancy, we don't need to install application. We don't need to install Pega application in many servers. We install in a single application, single server, and we share with multiple users. And every user, every considered as a tenant, and every tenant is is a independent, and the partition given to the tenant is a standalone now. In this multi-tenancy, you see a different roles to play. That is multi-tenant administrator, proxy administrator, and tenant administrator. And please remember that multi-tenancy does not mean to support a software development life cycle or it is not a business unit specialization. So this is a special feature of Pega which comes at the time of installation itself. You have to select whether you want Pega to be installed as a multi-tenant or normal installation. So I am moving to the next slide where we talk about the high availability. Again this high availability is introduced by Pega 7 which minimizes your downtime. So whenever a system, a production system goes through a downtime, you may see of customer attrition, you may some organization may face some legal issues. So in this scenario, Pega has come up with a high availability concept which minimizes the downtime even in the planned and unplanned outage. So just it requires a load balancer and shared storage. And you know that Pega 7 comes with a split schema that is your database is not two. One is to store your rules, another is to store your data. So this split schema helps us in minimizing the downtime. Again, we have a dynamic container introduced in Pega 7, which records all your UI and databases are automatically restored in Pega 7. So one thing you have to remember that clip pages, or clipboard pages are not saved automatically when the system goes down when it's, it is unfit. But the requester re requester context is restored from the shared stored context. So that uh, that's all about Pega 7 new features here. So we are missing the demonstration. We'll see how we can demonstrate this in the next session. At least now I'm giving uh, uh, handing uh, to Rajni Khan, who will talk on uh, Pega upgrade. Yeah, Rajni, we'll go to your Pega upgrade part. Directly. Yeah. Uh, the time is running. Yeah. Thanks, SP and uh, Shivana. Uh, now knowing the Pega 7 features. Most of the customers are interested in upgrading their application from their existing version 5 or 6 to 7. So I want to uh, handle the slide uh, or the area into three. One, where Mutisa is in the overall upgrade solution. Two, a glimpse of upgrade approach. And the third item is on what do Mutisa team members get in the R&D. To start with, where Virtusa stands in overall upgrade solution, and it's been uh, we we do have a pride or to announce like uh, Virtusa is being chosen as one of the trusted partner for upgrade. It's because of its competency and also the kind of experience Virtusa do have across many applications upgrade. So we are honored by the pick. And the second part is on, and uh, we do have a Virtusa Innovation Upgrade Center where we do continuous R&D towards the upgrade improvement process in terms of uh, optimizing some of the process, in terms of estimation data, in terms of optimized code review, etc. So this is all we do as a part of our innovation center, and that is one among the reasons why Pega chosen us as a trusted partner in this area. And moving on to the glimpse of the upgrade approach. So when we see this up upgrade, it is unlike any other engineering, like your development engineering, it does take its own process and methodology. And we have, do have a prepackaged upgrade methodology which covers three phases, discover phase, implementation phase, that is execution phase, and transition phase. The discover phase is very important. This is a phase where we analyze 
the risk associated with the existing code set in moving towards the upgrade, such as the number of frameworks involved, the number of guardrail violations, number of integrations, number of third party tools used, etc. All those would be analyzed and that analysis would lead to an estimation. When we would say uh, we have done a lot of automation in this area, since this being a common feature or common part which is applicable for any of the upgrade project, we have done enough analysis and R&D on this to come up with an automated tool to have a maximum output out of the discovered area. The second part is the execution and even this is quite unique in nature when compared to a development project. Here this is the place where we set up a sandbox environment, we do uh, our internal testing and then uh, we run a wizard etc. So which is the, the sequence and the design structure is pretty much unique in nature and it's not applicable for a development, it's applicable only for an upgrade project. And third step is the transition, this is where uh, all the, the testing would go on. The automa even here we, are, we have come up with an optimized approach of automating uh, the test cases and the testing process so, so that, uh, that the entire process can be completed in 8 to 10 weeks depending upon the size of the project. These are some of the unique features and the glimpse of the upgrade approach that we offer to any of the customers. And the last point, so, so this is not the customer and this is what our versus our team members get. Uh, many do not really get an opportunity to work in such kind of project being very niche within Pika. But however the, the team members within Virtusa do really get an excellent opportunity to take part in the R and D of any upgrade assessment and also they to take part in the real execution too. Thereby it's apart from they getting a certified and uh, learning Pega specific uh, design and uh, execution methodology, they also do get an experienced and uh, nourished resources in the upgrade process too. So with that uh, I close down the, the website upgrade presentation too. We are open for questions. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks Rajinti. Um, your team, uh, I'm really sorry for not being able to uh, demonstrate some of the PRPC7 functionality like multi-tenancy, high availability and part of the DCO because we are facing some technical challenges. So maybe in our next session we would uh, come out with those demonstration only. However, you know, the, the, the point that I'm going to you know, share with you is uh, right, as rightly said by Rajdi, we have a very, very, I would say that highly advanced, uh, you know, PRPC research lab here in Virtusa where we are working jointly with Pegasystems and also kind of working on building some of the frameworks which could be rendered on PRPC 7 like, uh, you know, smart claim, then PCS framework and all those stuff. So from that perspective, uh, it, it's very interesting and challenging environment here in Virtusa to work with some of these features in PRPC 7. So now we are open for questions. Uh, thank you so much everyone. Um, we actually faced a lot of uh, problems today right from the very beginning. And uh, since we have run out of time today, we we'll unfortunately have to wrap up the session uh, because otherwise the session any which way is going to expire in the next couple of minutes. So I'm going to request all those who joined in today's session to probably leave us a question offline. Uh, you can post your queries by coming on techgeek.com and uh, posting your questions on our discussion forum. And SP, uh, Shivaram and Rajni, I'm going to request all three of you to also come on techgeek.com and answer uh, to these queries uh, on the discussion forum. And as uh, SP clearly stated, uh, definitely in, in one of our future webinars, uh, we would try to uh, work, uh, work out as far as the demo is concerned, uh, which we missed out in today's session. And uh, on that note, I am going to quickly wrap up the session. Thank you so much, everyone, and apologies once again for all the technical problems that we face today. Okay. Thanks. Thanks, Yolanda.
Thank you. Thank you. Bye, everybody.